Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and a lot of people are very interested in cutting down their fuel bills at the moment and some of them may be thinking about linking up some kind of solid fuel stove with their existing heating and thereby allowing them the flexibility of solid fuel and something like oil or gas or whatever they've got. I've been looking at these systems for years. I'm a little confused by them sometimes. So I've got somebody here, Art McCardinal, and he is from Heat Heroes. And they he says they've got the perfect system. They've got the answer to this. And uh, it will increase the efficiency of your solid fuel boiler. Is that right? Well, that's exactly it, Roger. We have this system on the market now about six years. We have thousands of them installed. We're getting efficiency lifts from between 30 and 50% from existing systems. The problem is most people who have solid fuel boilers recognize that the far away radiators are hard to heat. The amount of fuel they're putting into the stove isn't representative of the heat that they're getting from the radiators. The main problem for that is circulation. The water isn't circulating fast enough through the system. And that's a flaw in the existing system. It's impossible to create fast circulation in the existing open vented system. And that's why people have inefficiencies and uh, can't get full value from the fuel. So Heat Hero very simply fixed that. 98% of houses are done this way. So this is your oil boiler and that's your solid fuel boiler, your radiators and your cylinder. So this is a standard gravity open vented system. Now the problem with this, the circulating pump, which was always recommended, is fitted on the cold return pipe from the radiators. When that comes on, on the existing system, it circulates the water through the stove and back towards the radiators. But the problem is, is the open vent is in front of the pump. So as soon as the pump comes on, it pushes the pressure out of the system and the circulation on the faraway radiators is slow. That's every system. That's the first problem. The second problem is the oil boiler. When it comes on, it also circulates towards the radiators. But in front of the pump here also is the open vent. Yeah, okay. That's the second problem. And the third problem is that domestic hot water is only heated by gravity on the solid fuel side. Gravity is the slowest form of uh, heat transference. What most people have is to have a thermostat here in the hot press to yeah. bring on the pump. So the standard system has to wait on gravity to heat the hot water before the pump comes on. And solid fuel in its nature being non-controllable, the heat in here could be up to 400 degrees and it's still waiting on gravity to heat the hot water. So this is very, very slow transfer of heat. So there are the three main problems that uh, arise in, in everybody's solid fuel, which leaves inefficiency in the system, if you like. The water's passing slowly through the stove towards the radiators, and where you see that is on those faraway radiators. There's a saying with plumbing is water takes the path of least resistance, which means is that if you allow water to go somewhere that you don't want it, like up the open vent, yeah. that's where it's going to go. If this system isn't working, if it's just idle, it sits at about 0.5 of a bar a pressure. As soon as the pump comes on, that 0.5 drops to zero. The neutral point on this system is where the cold feed comes in just by yes. the cylinder, yeah? There's different areas where you can bring the cold feed in and different theories about what you can do with it to find the neutral spot in the system. But it doesn't change the fact that there's no pressure. The only thing it'll do is stop this water from Something blowing out right. here. Yeah. It doesn't oh. fix the pressure problem. Okay, so if you put if so, so if we put a close coupled vent and cold feed in, yeah, there, yeah, you would you would overcome the pumping over issue. But yes. what you say what you're saying is you would still have a sluggish circulation exactly the radiators. Now, um, I've done a lot of this in the past because I, I worked for the Surrey County Council on all their tenanted farm properties, and I was putting wood burning stoves in and linking them up. And what we found was that if you put too much water through the stove, it cooled the fire to such an extent that you got condensation on the back boiler and then it rotted the back boiler in as little as two or three years. So you need a thermostat on the boiler, uh, on the solid fuel boiler, to make sure that what we used to do is recirculate the water through the boiler to bring it up to heat. They are all added advantages. Yeah. 
the, the principle of the heating system is what happens after that. Okay. You know what I mean? Sort of thing. And that's where the water passing through the pipes, getting efficiency from your stove to the radiators. That's the biggest problem people have. Yeah. Is getting those far away radiators to heat and getting efficiency from the fuel that are burning. This this is the biggest problem. Every day we get loads of calls with that exact problem because the increase in oil and everything else. You have people who have access to uh, timber uh, yeah. putting in wood burning stoves now with boilers in them. This new system we have here is a huge advantage to them. So this is the drawing of the new system with Heat Hero in it. These are the two Heat Hero manifolds, so I can just show them to you. That's the Heat Hero return manifold yeah, yeah. and the Heat Hero flow manifold. All that's in those is injectors. There's no moving parts. This is a once in a lifetime install to change your system forever. If you remember on the old system, the circulating pump was here on the return. The problem with that was, as I said, the open vent was in front of the pump all the time. Same with the oil boiler. So what we had to do was move the pump to the flow. That was the only way of fixing it. But that wasn't possible without problems or it would have always been fed on the flow. What used to happen is when you put the pump on the flow and plumbers do it without, you know what I mean, like without the heat hero system, it just doesn't work properly. What happens is the pump is stuck in the water from the radiators. Yeah. And what would happen is this cold water would go up and it'd be sucked through the domestic cylinder and cool the cylinder. So it never worked. So what we did with this injector box is the pump goes here on the flow. The cold water comes up here and it's injected into the stove. At the same time, there's still a suction behind the pump. We inject hot water from in front of the pump through the cylinder. So the pump is sucking hot water through the cylinder, heating it in reverse every time the pump comes on. Now, when the pump stops, it's back to gravity. These are full gravity systems. The water passes through these without any any uh, breakages at all. What you have literally is a fully pumped system. So you have your full gravity, so you light your stove as usual. Now, the difference with this is, as well, is you don't put your stack in the hot press like before. If you look at an oil or gas boiler, the stat is actually built into them because that's where the heat is. And they are fully pumped systems with one pipe in and one pipe out. Just telling the wall, you never see an oil boiler with four pipes or gas boiler, re re very re rarely. And this is the same. This is a fully pumped gravity open vented system. When you light your stove, your stat is put as close to the stove as possible. Because that's the, where you mon monitor the heat from. On the flow? On the flow. Okay. So as soon as the heat comes on, at 55 degrees is what it's set at. Yeah. As soon as that comes on, it's, the pump kicks in. Now, instead of, if you remember before, what we said was when the pump was on here and it came on, it pushed the pressure up the expansion and uh, out of the system. The exact opposite happens now. So this system, the same as the old one, is sitting at 0.5 of a bar. Yeah. As soon as the pump comes on in this system, it actually sucks water out of the tank. And instead of running at 0.5 of a bar, it runs at 0.7. Okay. So now you have strong pressure through the system. You're getting even heat to all your radiators. The water is moving through the stove faster, and you're getting more heat. The oil boiler as well in this link-up, because it is protected from the expansion here with this non-return valve, it works on pressure all the time as well. So now you have fast circulation from the oil. And what we find generally when we fit these in, not only does the stove improve, but also the oil improves massively because you have faster circulation from the oil too. The radiators get hotter. In general, we end up turning down the stat of the boiler. It could be on 80 degrees when we go there. When we leave it, we could be leaving it at 65, 70 because the radiators are heating faster from the oil also. It's a pressurized system, and that's what everybody wants. That's what the oil boiler manufacturers want, the stove manufacturers want. But the great thing about this as well is it has the full safety. It has still has an open vent. Yeah. So nothing can go wrong. It still has gravity, but it's fully pumped. Your cylinder is pumped every time the pump comes on, so it's heating the water faster. Yeah. And the pump is off, it has it on gravity, so it's still heating it the old way as well. You have far, far stronger circulation through the radiators. We realize that solid fuel in its nature is non-controllable. The most important thing about solid fuel, apart from safety, 
is circulation. If you don't get the water through that stove fast enough, that fuel has gone up the chimney. It's yeah. not like an oil boiler or a gas boiler will turn off and wait on the pump to take away the heat. Solid fuel won't turn off. So we are recommending all solid fuel heating systems now to be fed with 8 meter circulating pumps. The reason why we stop at 8 meter is because that's the largest residential pump you can buy within a reasonable price range. Yeah. So now what we are finding, when we go on into a house, for example, or lots of plumbers all over Ireland are fitting these now, they recommend to the customer to fit the 8-metre pump and the two heat heroes and to move this around. It literally, on a standard system, takes about half an, an hour and a half to fit this system because you're only taking the pump from here, from this pipe to this pipe, and then you're taking the two T's to stare already off and you're replacing them with them two manifolds. Your job's done. Like an hour and a half to two hours, but you'd still have to drain the system and fill it. So you could be talking about half a day in total, or depending on how bad the system is, it could take a day. There was never a system for solid fuel until now. This is a system for solid fuel that an apprentice can install and be guaranteed to get full efficiency from the stove. How, how does this differ from the, the Dunsley neutralizer? In its actual name, it tells you. Yeah, the it's neutralizer. neutralizer. It yeah. doesn't create pressure. Okay. And doesn't, it stops it from over pitching or stops it. it. It's a neutral box or it brings it all into a neutral zone and That's everything fine. works. But it doesn't have the fast circulation that heat here will have. And they'll never re recommend you to put an eight meter pump on your solid fuel boiler. So this system here, the water can go nowhere. A mechanical impossibility for this to pitch because it's behind the pump. So we can put now any size pump we want on that because this is non-controllable. If you don't get the water, and we have proved this, that the more times you pass the water through that system, the more heat you're going to get out. Some people believe that the slower it goes through it, the more heat you'll get out. But that's actually not factually true. The fact of the matter is, and as I say, we have proved it through the colleges, is the more times you put water through that stove, the more heat you're going to get out in your radiators. Yeah. Because the whole system raises. And now what people find is, because the water's going through there faster, and the radiators are heating hotter, that this stove here now can be set at, it, it has just worked on in an hour and a half, and now it's ticking over. When you put your bigger pump and you create the pressure in the system, we are talking between 30 and 50% more efficiency. Why is the eight metre pump you've got there not sucking air down through that vent pipe? So we have a recommendation of a metre, a metre uh, uh, of height from the highest point of your heating system. So... Like this here would be one meter. At we least, have that on our website. At, at least more is at least one meter. Yeah, that that's enough water in the expansion to to keep the to keep the water in it. So like the, there's there's no air in the system. So when the pump comes on, it creates a certain suckage. Mm. The eight meter pump, if there's a meter of water in your expansion won't pull it down past it. Really? Why? If, yeah. it's, if it's an eight metre pump, surely it should pull on that. So this water here level, if you take it across here, so that's, let's say, that point there. That's the water level. When yeah. that pump comes on, now we're talking about a metre, that yeah. water will drop to about 200, but it won't drop below it. Now, we have thousands of these fed here. Plumbers are fitting them everywhere, and we have a Facebook we can we can put a link up in it where people can read the testimonials. I'm just asking the questions that plumbers will ask if they see this diagram. That's that's what I'm hoping. I, I understand that, Roger. But plumbers, and I'm a plumber myself. We have had uh, plumbers coming on to us where they can't get the one meter head. You know what I mean, like sort of thing, because it could be a very slight attic or yeah. problems. You know, some houses don't have an attic. So what we did is we came up with a reservoir, and the reservoir sits on to the expansion. Three litres of water. So now your tank can be fitted only 300 hay above the highest point and it'll still work fine. You couldn't just move that cold feed to next to the vent pipe, could you? Would that not work? No, the cold feed has to go on the gravity return. That gravity return is working both ways, isn't it? So yes. it's working forwards and it's working the way you would expect it to work. And then when you when the pump goes on, it's feeding it the other way. Exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. just, so just just so just run your pen if you can without putting your hand in the way. Run your pen along that gravity return. When the pump's on, just show me the path that it's going through. Okay, so the pump comes on here, it comes yeah. through here. This is a balancing valve. Yeah. So you can turn that down depending on how far you are away from your cylinder with the heat heroes. Yeah. It comes through here into an injector. Yeah. 
and then through here. At the same time, this cold water is coming injecting back here. So that water goes straight through here, up through your coil, back round here, back down here, and it's a circuit. Just below the pump, is that a cross or is that a passover? That's a passover. You've got the thermostat on the flow on the wood burner. If that drops below temperature, that stat turns off. What does that turn off? The pump. So then we're relying on the pump, which is on the return on the oil boiler, to carry on doing its bit, yeah? Yeah, if that's the way, if it's on, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So we definitely need a dual coil cylinder here. We, we don't overly re uh, recommend a single coil, but we can adapt this to a single coil as well. Can you really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, what we can do is we can zone the radiator. We can turn off all the radiators from the solid fuel boiler and only have it doing hot water yeah. because it's pumped on the circuit. Let's say these valves are all off. Very simply, the pump comes on. It can't go to the radiators. It's circulating through here. We put a second stat on the stove. Ah. And, and we set it at about 65 degrees, 10 degrees higher than your standard stat. If this goes above 65 degrees, it automatically opens one of the zones. Okay, yeah, to get rid of like a heat leak. We can do anything we want with solid fuel now. We have a cooker here burning wood. We have never bought coal. We're heating 23 radiators with. When you look at your, your solid fuel by the way, the water for Stanley now, they, they're an Irish stove company. So they're the only ones in this country that has an R&D department. They put this through their R&D department. And now they're recommended on their website. Oh, okay. Householders understand this because they know that the fact there's something wrong with the faraway radiator. Yeah. And the, the crazy thing is that you have twice the heat in the stove than you have in an oil boiler. Like you have a bit, an oil boiler or a gas boiler operates at about in the flame. The flame, I think, is around the 200, 250 degrees. You could have 450 degrees in here. Everybody knows they're not getting the heat to the radiators, and that's because the water's passing through it too slowly this is really interesting um but let's look at the front first of all okay so that's that's the flow one so that's the top box it's got the arrows on it yeah that's yeah, so fine. It's in the flow yeah okay. radiators got it okay and let's have a look inside then see what's that's going the on the back. okay so that's a that's an injector t basically isn't it we're looking at yeah so we've got a straight path across between the the left and the right and the thing coming up from the bottom is just the swept elbow there. So if you flip it round now, I'll just keep my head in that. Now we would be putting 28 mil pipe work into this at least for the uh, for the solid Stone. fuel. That's right. Yeah. So they're, that, they're, they're BSP treads, so they're, they're they're universal. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So so yeah. we pipe that up, and then after that we can go where, where we've got the radiator flow. We can do that down in 22 if we needed to or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. It's amazing. I'm sure there's parts of England the same where people really rely on the solid fuel for heat. Yeah, yeah. And their system could be done in microball. Mm. It makes no difference what the system is. If you can follow the diagram that I showed you with Heat Hero, let it be microball or whatever it is, because you have the pressure now, it'll drive it through. If your oil's heating it, your stove will heat it. Yeah. And when you say pressure, this is, this is another thing that slightly confused me because... The difference between pressure and flow. You're talking about getting a, a, a static head on it, really, aren't you? Is it the yeah. pressure? The pressure is caused by the eight meter pump, basically. Yeah. Well, like you have your static pressure of 0.5 the bar. The important thing to realize about that is on the existing systems, because there'll be plumbers looking at this and thinking, well, your remaining sort of thing, what's the difference between this and the old system? The old system has the same static pressure. Yeah. As what our system has. Yeah. Because we are retrofitting this onto the old system. The difference is, is the circulating pump pushes that pressure out of the system every time it comes on on the old system. With our system, the exact opposite happens. Okay. So that 0.5 of a bar turns into 0.7. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because you're pulling the water that's in the expansion on the negative side of the pump, pulling it down into the system. And, and and you'll see that gear drain. Did you find any problems with air in it or not? It's not no. sucking air in around the radio. No. One meter is all we require. If there is an issue, we have a reservoir. We don't, like, like we've, we've never had an issue. This is the great thing with this system. Like, we never get calls 
if it's installed correctly. The only code you might get is if, if a plumber didn't follow the instructions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, which never happens, surely. <laughs> well, no, no, it's very rare. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, on, just on a practical point, if you're connecting uh, one of those heat heroes up and you're putting a male iron connector into it, do you use PTFE tape on that or do you use something else? Well, like a lot of plumbers use PTFE tape. It, wouldn't, like it, it hasn't really taken off in air and it's more used for gas. I've always been taught to use flax and that's why I never use PTFE tape. Yeah. I just love yeah. flax. So what we used to say, Boss White and Hemp, you can now get um, a, a, a thread, can't you? The Loctite thread. Same sort of thing, but a bit more expensive. It, yeah. When we came up with this, people were ringing us because of their story with their pressure cylinders not yeah. taking gravity. So we came up with a system for that. So this is called the Heat Hero Direct. I, I should probably finish off that other one with, by telling you that yeah, that's the return manifold. Because yeah. you look at the flow. Yeah. So that's the return one. And also it says on that solid fuel return, cylinder return, radiator return, and then the, the cylinder inject, the injector, which yeah. is that little pipe that heats the cylinder. Mm. So that's the return of that other system. So it, it really is easy to install. Now, this here we are finding is a super machine because the only, the only one in the market like it because if you went, there's a, used to have the Heat Genie and that sort of few different uh, products that would allow you work with a pressure system if you like. It's very important for plumbers to know that an oil boiler works 100% efficient on, a, on 0.7 of a bar. Okay. 0.5 and 1 bar so we'd always tell them to use the heat hero gravity like you'd have plumber saying phone is up saying oh it's a closed system pressure it's oil I want to keep a pressure we'd, say, we'd always say to them keep a pressure but use the heat hero gravity it'll still give you the pressure you need to drive that water even if it's dropped systems doesn't matter you'll have enough pressure in that on the floor heating with the gravity so yes. every system out there Oil or low pressure gas or solid fuel on its own, the gravity is fine. This here now is more for if you can't get gravity to your cylinder, you don't need a cylinder with this system. Now, it operates in the same story as this with injectors in here. The most important thing about this is there is no heat exchanger on your stove. All the other systems that, do, that provide uh, this story for pressure cylinders. This system, the Heat Hero Directs, works on the same pressure as the gravity, 0.7 of a bar. Yeah. It has the same regulations, the open tank, everything. The only thing it has that this doesn't have, that the gravity doesn't have, is it has a built-in 44 kilowatt cooling loop. You know the cylinders used as a backup to cool the system down if the electricity fails. If the electricity fails with this system, water mains passes through this point and through the, the, the cooling loop and cools the gravity as it passes through. So now you can fit a pressure cylinder or no cylinder at all and still have full efficiency from your solid fuel boiler, zoned as well. We've got an unvented cylinder in there, and you're saying that if the solid fuel overheated, the mains water would come in and cool it down. What controls that mains water coming in? So this basically goes within one metre of your stove, and mm. it operates with temperature. It doesn't need electricity. So if this system or your stove goes above 90 degrees, this automatically opens and water mains come what, flying what, through. So what's in there? A wax capsule or something? Exactly, yeah. The problem we have, on, and I never like as a plumber myself and dealing with customers the same way you did, you always want to leave the job as efficient and good as you can. The problem was that if you had a heat exchanger on the solid fuel boiler, it was inefficient because solid fuel in its nature is non-controllable. You can put a heat exchanger on a gas boiler or an oil boiler and have a certain amount of efficiency because it'll turn off and wait on the heat exchanger to do its job. But with solid fuel, because of that uncontrollable nature, there's too much heat been lost. Now, we have a system. We don't actually recommend it. It's what we say with it's the heat hero high pressure system. That puts a heat exchanger on the solid fuel boiler. It, so if you have a high pressure gas boiler, for example, now we'd always recommend if the plumber can that he puts a heat exchanger on the gas boiler and not put a heat exchanger on the stove. I could be getting a wee bit complicated with all this different... Yeah, these yeah different that's interesting. I was, gonna, I was gonna ask you about gas because there will be people watching this who are saying, look, I've got a gas boiler and what I wanna do is I wanna be able to burn wood when I've got it 
and then gas when I haven't, you know. So yeah. there will be people, not everybody's going to have an oil boiler. I understand that in the rural locations, this is absolutely ideal. But for those people that have got mains gas but still want to cut down on the mains gas by burning a bit of timber, uh, yeah. then, then they can exactly. do it, basically, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's perfect for them. If they wanted to go a step further, they could put a heat exchanger on the gas boiler, keep yeah. it lovely and clean and pressurised, and just go with the standard gravity system then. Yeah, yeah. Or the direct. When I first saw your diagram and I was looking at it, I was thinking, he's got the arrows the wrong way around here. Yeah. I was thinking on the return. I was thinking the arrows ought to go the other way. I was thinking, surely he hasn't produced that diagram and, and not spotted that mistake. But I see what you're saying. It's a funny little thing where it's going both ways, isn't it? You know? I know, yeah. Like, and you, sometimes you don't know what you're doing right, showing it that. Because it does create that confusion. It's very hard to get every aspect of it. It's the same with the open vent is a question we get regular. They want to know if you can put the open vent eight or say to these, and yeah. you can. So the open vent doesn't have to go any particular side of this. No, because it's the path is still open from the still sort open, of yeah. to the vent. Yeah. So it's not, there's most, no valve in it or anything like no, that. No, most yeah. most installs are just in the hot press where the expansion is in the attic. Yeah. I you think know, that's, yeah. that's important to say to people, never put a valve between the solid fuel boiler and the open vent because oh, yeah. enough, in Dylan's house we found that, you know, somebody's done exactly that. But people are relaying so much on solid fuel that they're basically desperate and they're doing anything they can, including capping off their open vent. To stop the pumping over. Stop the pumping over. In the colleges in this country, they're still teaching the same old story. They inject their teeth on the return, the pump yeah. on the return, and people are coming out. And you know yourself, you could do one job like that, and it might work okay. You do the next job, and it's pitching yeah. over. And yeah. then the plumber is putting his own wee tricks into to try and fix it, and yeah. they're putting valves here and there, and this, this does away with it all. Everything. Yeah. That's the way I, I've done loads of them with an injector tea like that. What I used to do is for the Surrey County Council, I had loads of tenanted farms and, and those guys had unlimited, the tenants had unlimited supplies of, of wood. Yeah. So yeah. it was obvious, you know, we would link up a, a, a wood burner to the heating, to the central heating, mm -hmm. to the, the hot water cylinder. But the two things that happened is one that if, if the water cooled too much, it rotted through the heat exchanger in the back boiler on the solid fuel. But the other thing was that they had all these unlimited supplies of wood, but they burnt it like there was no tomorrow. So it wasn't seasoned wood. So then you got the tar build up in the stove yeah. and that whole thing. Yeah. But of course, if you cool the water down too much, if, you, if you're cooling the fire down too much by putting the water through it too fast then you do get the tar build up and the whole thing, block chimneys. We always recommend that the timber is kindled dry. You know, you're fooling yourself by putting damp fuel in because the fire's going to dry it anyway. You don't get the heat from it, do you? That's the trouble. You don't get the heat. If you've good kindled dry wood, you won't need cold. On the continent, you see people, huge wood piles, and you can see that the wood they're going to be burning in five years' time down there, and, and they get yeah. everything in a line. And that's fantastic. If you've got that kind of land, yeah. you've got... You got those woods, then that's that's a brilliant thing. But a lot of people, a lot of people seriously underestimate how much wood they will burn to keep in a house going. Yeah. The central heating, it, it is a lot, isn't it? You it know? is a lot. Yeah, like it, it is a lot. Having that dual system is is perfect. If you've got yeah. the energy and you're out there cutting the wood up and getting it in, absolutely fine. Yeah. If you're a bit busy, switch on the oil and, and exactly because sometimes the water's passing through it so slowly. People will be telling, especially with the insets, is it's not giving out any heat to the room. Yeah. But what, what's happening is the water's so cold in the system, it never heats up properly and it's keeping the stove cool. That's so it. We, That's find, it. we find when we put this onto it and everything's speeded up, now the stove is giving out way more heat. It's great to talk to you. And we're going to run yeah. this on our channel. And honestly, I think the comments we're going to get, the people that are going to be confused, the people who have got ideas, but it all adds to the debate and, it, and it's fascinating. I got this from a viewer. Um, he contacted us saying, I'm thinking of putting this thing in. And uh, I said, right, okay. And I said, I must admit, I've looked at it. I don't really understand it, you know, so yeah. that's why I got in contact with you. And um, it's good to talk to you anyway. Well, I, as I yeah. say, I think we will come out and have a have a look at an installation. We love a trip to Ireland. We always, <laughs> yeah, have, we always have a good time. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. It's an oh. town. This is nothing too crazy about it, so yeah. you'll enjoy it. Yeah.
Okay, lovely. Nice so thank you again, Roger. It's been a pleasure. Hey, and, and look, if you have any questions, you want to send me an email or text or whatever the story is, we'll yeah. get back to help you any way we can. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good day. Cheers.